What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So this is gonna be a short video, but I did wanna highlight a new add-on that Mark Kingsnorth just rolled out. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is something I've talked with Mark about in the past, um, and basically there's an extension for SketchUp that basically allows you to place objects on a flat surface and then kind of map it to a surface like this. So it's kind of like conform object, but in my opinion, it's a lot better because you can size out your source object and then map your object onto a target surface and bend and deform objects along a surface. So um, conform object is great for like character models and things like that, but Flowify on the other hand is basically a tool that flows your objects along surfaces like this. So for like architectural applications and things like that, this is actually super cool. And by the way, you can check this out at the cgessentials.com slash Flowify. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission um, if you purchase, but you can check that out at that link. But this is is obviously something that I'm super excited about. You can probably hear it in the way that I'm talking about it. What I like about Flowify is it gives you the ability to model on top of a base mesh. Um, and then you can also map that base to a target mesh. So it allows you to be a lot more precise, at least in my opinion, than conform object, which is also a great extension, but it's more now built around that lattice feature. Um, and like I said, it's really good for character type stuff. But this for me just kind of like speaks to like my architectural mind. But basically the way that it works is you just select the object that you want to flow. You can just right click and click on Flowify. Now, notice how we have some issues here in the sense that these faces are oriented improperly. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm just gonna to wanna to go in here. And so I'm just gonna go into my mesh options and uh, for the normals on these, I'm just gonna flip them. Now, if I run um, Flowify, it should work properly. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that those are oriented properly, meaning you want the blue faces facing towards your camera. But now if I run Flowify, notice what I can do is I can mouse over this mesh and it's gonna find corners. And that's one thing that's gonna be important about this tool is it's gonna find the corners and then you're gonna tell it to select one corner and then a corresponding corner on your other object. Now note that your other object needs to have four corners and note that this is finding those corners. But if I click, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna to try to bend this mesh along this surface. But we've got a problem and the problem is I don't have enough supporting geometry in this object right here in order for that to work very well. So amount of detail in your geometry is going to be important. So over here, for example, if you take a look at this, what I've done, I can tab in here is I've just added a bunch of loop cuts in here. Um, so now this has a bunch of additional detail and then it's just an array modifier across here. But now if I right click and I do a flowify and I'm gonna go ahead and flip those normals real quick. So I'm gonna do a mesh normals flip. We're good to go. But then I'm just gonna click on this corner. I'm gonna click on this corner and notice how that's going to map this object along this surface. And so what I like about this is it's very predictable in the way that it's going to work, um, which a lot of tools that I've used are a little less predictable when it comes to what you're going to get. But the cool thing about this is this is live, meaning it's UV mapping or mapping this object along this surface. And notice how if I move it like up, for example, off of this surface down here, that's going to affect how far off of the surface down below this is as well. So this gives you a lot of interesting possibilities. Like for example, I could animate this object moving across here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my snapping off so you can see this, but notice how this object is kind of moving along here. I could also do things like scaling it if I wanted it to be smaller on this surface as well. So for me, this is just super interesting in the results that you can create. So another example here is we've got some taller objects, but if I wanted to use Flowify on these objects, I would just click, click, and we're good. And so one thing that you may wanna note about this, and I'm actually gonna jump back over to this example right here, is notice what this is doing is this is applying a Flowify modifier to this object, right? So it's basically using geometry nodes to map this onto the surface. And there's some things you can adjust, for example, like how high this is going to be, right? So you can set it to one, you can set it to negative, whatever. But notice how it's taking this source object and it's bending it along this surface. We'll say that you wanted this to have some additional detail, right? So if I look at this, you know, maybe you don't like the way the mesh is bending along the surface just because of the way this is split up. Well, what you could do is you can go back into your original object, right? 
right here and you could set a subdivision modifier. And I've actually got one on here. So I'm gonna take that off for a second. So this is what this would originally look like if you tried to bend this along the surface. But if you add a modifier, so, or a subdivision surface modifier before your other modifiers in here, we're gonna do the simple, right? But I'm just gonna add some cuts and watch what happens over here as I add the cuts. So it's adding that additional geometry and it's bending this a lot better along the surface based on the amount of geometry I have in here. Now, obviously you wanna be careful because you start getting a whole lot of geometry in here, but you can use that in order to get some better results. But then over here, we can do the same thing right? So these are just very simple objects. Well, if I took all these objects and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and I'm going to subdivide them a couple times like this. I'm just adding some additional geometric detail in here. Well, what this is going to do is that's going to give me a better result down here because I've got more detail for this to work with. And then we can make adjustments like moving this up or down or whatever we wanted to do. There's actually a lot of cool options in here for things you could do with this particular add-on. And so one of the things for me that I think is most helpful or one of the, one of the best applications for this tool is taking objects and bending them along things like barrels or other things like that. And so I've got a base rectangle right here and then I've got the geometry I want to bend over top of that. Well, all I have to do is select that, do a flowify, and then just find the corners, right? And I could pick any of these corners, by the way. I could take this corner over here and map it to this corner and it's gonna work just as well. But notice how that's gonna take this object and it's going to bend it along this surface. And so one of the cool things about this is I could come up here and I could, if I wanted to, scale down my base geometry in order to make this flatter. But you could also jump into that Flowify system right here and adjust the height like this. And so the cool thing about this is this is a live tool where you can come back and you can make adjustments. So for example, say that I was to come in here and let's say I selected some of this object right here and maybe I extruded it down. And so let's say I was to push that down and I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, but that change is going to get reflected on this surface, right? So this is live, meaning you can go back and you can make any changes that you want to this. So you can move it around, you can scale it up. Um, so that is something I actually wasn't expecting with this tool and I am super happy about it because I can use this in order to do things like this live. There's a lot of interesting possibilities with keyframing locations and animations, right? Because since this is live, I could set this to keyframe a rotation, right? So to zero degrees. And then over here, I could set my rotation to 360 degrees and then insert that keyframe halfway through. Well, then if I run play, notice how this is gonna give me this kind of effect where it almost like unwraps this object. So there's just a ton of things you can do with this now that you can map these objects to these complex shapes in a live way. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. I'll be talking about Flowify more in the future. It's a tool that I'm really excited to see come to Blender, but I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.